Good morning, my friends. So I unexpectedly have an extra day off of work. And I am spending the time doing some blind testing of some of Philip's upcoming gas puzzles. So this is going to be, and the next few videos of mine will be a little bit interesting. These are not puzzles where I have prepared the solution before. These are genuinely, unless mentioned otherwise, my, my first tests of these upcoming Philip puzzles. So you're going to get to see just how I would approach these if I just saw them totally blind, totally out of the blue. I don't know the dates or titles that these are going to end up having. Um, I will tell you the rules and I will make sure that they get uploaded on the correct days. So let's take a look at this one. So this is an irregular Sudoku and that means we have normal Sudoku rules for rows and columns. So we're still placing one through nine ones each in each row and each column. But instead of having outlined three by three regions, we have irregularly shaped outlined regions. So for example, this is a region in this puzzle and it has to contain the digits one through nine once each, just like a region in a typical Sudoku. So the first thing that stands out to me solving this one is that I have these regions that occupy almost an entire column. And that actually is very meaningful in a regular Sudoku, because the thing is, I have to place the digits one through nine once each in this region. And I also have to place the digits one through nine once each in this column. I already have a three in this region, but I don't have a three in the column and I can't place a second three in the region. So in order to get a three into this column, I have to put it here. There's something kind of inverse of that going on over here on the right side in this column. I have a 9 in this column already, but I don't have a 9 in this region, and the only place that I can put a 9 in the region where it doesn't appear a second time in the column is going to be right there. So that's the first thing that stands out to me as somebody who solved a fair bit of irregular Sudoku and a fair few Philip Newman Sudokus. Um, let's see what else we've got here. So. I'm looking for opportunities to kind of follow up on that particular style of deduction. And what I notice now is that here I have a one and nine in row one, and that keeps me from putting one and nine in these cells in row one. And I also obviously can't put a one or a nine here because there's already a two there, but I do need to put at some point both a one and nine into this L-shaped region. So I'm gonna have to put them there. Do I have a symmetrical deduction here? So I have, three in row eight. And so there's no three there. There's no three there because there's a three in this row already. And that just tells me that there's a three in one of those cells. Oh, but I do see something else with three. So I have a three here and I can't put a second three into this region. So I can't put a three in any of those cells. I also can't put a three here and I can't put one here because there's one in column one. So there's my three. I also need to put a five somewhere in this row. And because I have a five in this region, it can't go in those cells. So that's going to be my five. And so these digits are going to just be the remaining digits for this row, which are four, six, and eight. And then the last digit that I have to place in this region is going to be a two. So there's a two. Now, do I reduce the four, six, and eight? I do a little bit, but not a ton. I need to put a two in row one somewhere. And because the two in this region, I can't put it in these cells. So it's going to have to go here. This column is starting to look restricted to me. I'm noticing, okay, so I have a two, a five, and a seven, and I don't have any of those numbers in this L-shaped region yet. And they can't go in these cells, so these will have to be my two, five, and seven. Those are the only positions those three numbers can go in in this L-shaped region. And then this can't be a two or seven, so that's the five. That's not a seven, so it's the two, and then this is my seven. And then my last digits here will be three, four, and six to finish the region. And that can't be the three, that can't be the six. And in this column, the last number I'm gonna need is a one. Now, row eight is very nearly finished. I need a four and a six to finish that row. And I can't tell which way around those are gonna go for me yet. So we'll leave that for just a moment. What else do we have available here? I'd like to place a three into, oh, I would like to place a three into this region. So I have a three here that keeps me from putting three in those cells. Three clearly can't overlap with any existing numbers. And there's also a three here in this column that rules three out of that cell. So this is going to be a three. Now threes are getting very restricted. Yeah, three is ruled out of every cell in this kind of middle curled region, actually, um, except for right here. So that's the only place I can put, put a three. And then that's going to make this a four and it's going to settle my three, four, six triple there. 
And I think that that's all of the threes in the puzzle, so I can safely ignore threes from here on out. So now that my eyes are there, um, the next thing I notice is that seven can't go in these cells because there's a seven in the region, and then the rest of the column is also getting quite full up. Seven can't go here either because there's a seven in row nine. So the only position for seven in column two is going to be right there. And so if I want to finish column two, very conveniently, I've used all of my odd digits. That's often kind of a shortcut you can use if you notice you've used your odd digits or you've used your even digits. That's a quick way to figure out what you still have to fill in. Just because I find that my brain anyways is more likely to kind of latch on to, oh, it's all odd or it's all even versus just like some random set of digits. Anyways, here I can tell pretty quickly that I still need four, six, and eight. This can't be the four or six, so that's the eight. Perfect. Now, does that give me anything interesting on eights? I'm not sure that it does. If it does, it's not obvious to me yet, so I'll leave that on the table for now. And what else do we need to do here? This column has most of its digits. I still need a four, a five, an eight, and a nine. That can't be the five or the eight because those are in the row. This also can't be a five or an eight because I have those in the region. So that's a four, nine pair making these cells five and eight. Oh, and that one can't be eight because there's an eight in the region. That's a little, that's a little sneaky, Philip. That's a little bit of a tricky one. I like it. I don't think it's unfair, but that's a, that's a little sneaky. Um, now, how about maybe this row? Like, I don't have a lot of digits placed yet, but I need something to look at. And I'm trying to kind of scan this to see, are there digits that are ruled out of a lot of positions in this row? I'm not sure. This column is more full. So what do I need here? I need one, four, six, and eight to finish this column. One isn't going to go there. And four won't go there because there's a four in the region. Four also won't go here, and neither will eight or six. So that's a one. This can't be an 8 because there's an 8 there. Um, that gives me a 4-6 pair, which makes this a 2-5 pair that resolves instantly. Beautiful. So I need here a 1, 6, 8, and 9. 9 can't go there, and that's just me trying to finish this region, to be really clear. So the only position for 9 in this region is going to be there. I need 1, 6, 8 in this column to fill this triple, and that means the remaining two digits are going to be 5 and 2 in that order. This can't be 2 because there's a 2 in the row. These are going to be some combination of 4, 6, and 8. Fabulous. That's not the 8. That's now a 4, 6 pair. Lots of pairs here. I'm not sure how many of them are like really mandatory to completing the solve, but they are making themselves seen, and I'm enjoying it. I need to put a 2 in this column somewhere. It can't go here, and it can't go here, so it goes there. And then that leaves me needing a 7 and a 9 to finish the column. And then that gives me a 7, 9 pair here, so that makes this a 4. And to finish the region, the last digit I'm going to need is a 1. That will give me a 9 and settle the 7-9 pair. So now these are 6 and 8 to finish this row. Oh, this can't be a 1, so that's a 1. And now the digits I need here are 2 and 4, which go that way around because of the 2 up there. So that's now a 6 and a 4, an 8 and a 6. We're really nearing the end here. That four makes this a six, and then the two digits I need here are gonna be four and nine. The nine tells me which way they go. Those can't be fours, so that's a six, eight pair giving me a four. And all of these fours, sixes, and eights are just going to resolve beautifully in this, this cascade of placing numbers. I love it, I love to see it. So I need seven and nine in this row. I don't think that's resolved yet. I need five and seven in this row, which is resolved. And that's what's, oh, and the seven, nine totally was resolved already. I was just blind. Um, and the last digit would be an eight. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's lovely, irregular, uh, kind of like spiral, spiral wiggly Sudoku. I hope you really enjoyed that one.